All right, everyone, welcome to Risk Management Insurance Planning, a guide to protecting your life. My name is Robert Raymond. I'm the Assistant Vice President of Private Client Services here at Hub International, and today we're going to talk about risk planning um, and teaching you guys a few tips and tricks on how to address your insurance and risk management needs throughout your life. Um, here is the agenda. I'll give you a brief overview on myself and why I hope you will trust what I say, as well as a few bullet points on risk planning itself, um, the theory behind it, and a few resources and items for reflection. Who am I? For the past decade after leaving our lovely institution of Drexel, I've spent the past 10 years actually dealing strictly with affluent families, which has given me some insight on the most complex of risk management needs. Everything from your basic homeowners and auto insurance to domestic employees planning for construction projects, foreign travel. Um, I currently fly the banner of Hub International. We're the ninth largest broker globally, and I do currently insure clients on about 18 different nations. Um, so it gives me a little bit of perspective on how a global person as well as a domestic person um, should behave and should treat their risk planning. So we're talking about risk management, and what does that mean? In its simplest form, risk management is, is simply taking the probability of having a loss affect your balance sheet and finding a way to either eliminate it, reduce the magnitude of it, or transfer that to another party, which is what we commonly refer to as insurance. But what's the difference between risk management versus simply purchasing insurance? When you're taking a risk management approach, you really want to put some thought behind why you're making the decisions and if a product-based solution is necessary. The three ways to do this really are analyzing your financial exposure to property loss. Um, I refer to these as known value losses. Your homes, your vehicles, your jewelry, things that you may collect, you sort of know what the value of those items is and you'll know what your exposure to loss is. Obviously, if you have a watch that you wear on your wrist all the time and you're out on the street, there might be an exposure to someone maybe robbing you. Um, with your house, you know it could go up in flames. The area where there's more concern is the unknown value losses, and these are areas where you're exposed to litigation or liability claims. That could be everything from causing an automobile accident to libel slander claim through social media um, or something as simple as a slip and fall at your house during uh, inclement weather. What you want to do is calculate your risk retention appetite and your tolerance for annual expense and products and try to find the right balance that fits your solution or your lifestyle. Um, primarily today we'll focus on property and casualty conversations. These bullet points represent a few of the common coverages in those areas. Homeowners and vehicles most people will have a need for. Not everyone is going to have a need for something like kidnap and ransom or private event coverage, um, but this sort of thought process will apply to all of those. And before we move further, let's talk real quick on why we should pay any mind to this conversation. The biggest and most important reason is to prevent an interruption to your lifestyle. That interruption could be something like not having your car available because you're in an accident and you still need to get to your place of employment, or it could be something as complex as needing to find a replacement for your secondary residence because you're unable to go on vacation. How do we do this? The most common way, and again, the conversation of risk management and insurance are closely intertwined, insurance products are the basic way that almost everyone tackles this. There's three ways to obtain products. The first is direct through an insurance company. They typically have an 800 service number. They operate for their own profit and are not necessarily in the business of paying claims. The uh, more claims they can deny, the larger the balance sheet is at the end of the year. A better way to go about it rather than going directly through an insurance company is through an agent. The agent is still captive to a particular insurer, but their profitability um, and the new clients that they uh, write and the ones that they retain actually affect how they're compensated. So they do have a little skin in the game, um, and they really want to make sure that an individual has a good experience and stays with them. State Farm and Allstate are two of the biggest companies in this field, and you will see signposts for local agents all over the country. They're a little bit geographically isolated. The big issue with an agent is if you have a home in Pennsylvania and you go to buy a home in California, it's unlikely that that agent will be able to service your needs. They'll likely refer you to someone within the same company um, with a different agency in that geography. The third way, um, the most comprehensive way, and the role that I fulfill is that of a broker. A broker represents an individual to a variety of insurers, basically putting their profile to the market, allowing these insurance companies to fight over and give the most comprehensive and best price solution available. 
what we're going to look at is a deep dive on three stages of your life, and I've given them very broad strokes here. Um, early adulthood, we'll look at this maybe as you're exiting or in college. Your established lifestyle when you start to accumulate some assets and really need to put a lot of thought behind your program. And then in retirement. In this stage, you typically have established a broker relationship. You may be winding down some of your assets, um, and you may be considering self-managing your program or, or stepping back your relationship. So let's talk about a few of the items involved there. So in your early years, your typical profile is having a lower asset base. You may have some parental overlap, everything from mom and dad signing off on the lease for your apartment to loaning you their car. And with all of those decisions comes a need to plan for how insurance will respond, who's going to bear the liability risk, and who's going to financially suffer if, if property were to be damaged. You also will have a lower tolerance for risk. Without a lot of cash in reserve, it's very hard to take high deductibles, um, and it's really hard to self-insure pieces to keep your annual expense on insurance products low. Uh, keeping a low price on your insurance is obviously something that's paramount because in your early years, even a $50 annual swing in premium is meaningful. And, and I'm sure everyone can commiserate not being able to buy enough ramen when you're just getting out of school is still a concern. Um, a few things to consider is insurance will be your biggest tool. Obviously, you want to make sure someone else is bearing all the financial burden if something were to happen. You'll typically need a renter's policy, which will also cover your primary liability. You'll need your automobile coverage, and the requirements for that are state-specific. Pennsylvania is different than Jersey, is different than Florida, is different than California. So make sure that you do a little homework or have someone help you in the decision-making process on what coverage you're required to maintain by the state. You may want to schedule some valuables, particularly as you're growing life. Maybe you get engaged or maybe you treat yourself to a nice piece of jewelry. Make sure you consider how to protect that and if you want to protect it. And something everyone does not consider but definitely should is getting a liability umbrella. This policy is the most important tool in your risk management arsenal as it's going to assure if someone brings litigation against you that the defense cost is covered and you're not out of pocket for that process. You're going to self-manage your policy in most cases and directly purchase your insurance. Um, I definitely recommend always going to the AMBEST website, ambest.com, and looking at the financial strength ratings of carriers. Typically going with an A-plus or at minimum A-rated carrier will assure that they have the cash and reserves to pay claims and minimize the chance that you're going to have an issue at claims time. You will be handling those claims by yourself. Um, you may be tempted to secure a public adjuster if you feel that the loss settlement process is not going up to your needs. Just make sure before you do this that you actually read the insurance contract. In most instances of a claims denial or a reduction in your um, estimated settlement, by just doing a little bit of due diligence in the contract verbiage and pushing back on the insurance company, you could be able to actually solve the issue yourself. Um, insurance companies tend to get scared when someone points out their own verbiage and uses it against them. When you start to establish your life and have a larger asset base, you're going to have a lot more concerns. You may have multiple homes, multiple vehicles, you may have watercraft, uh, you may have domestic help. All these things need to be planned for. Insurance sometimes is the best solution, other times it's through uh, financial planning. You will have multi-generational concerns as well. You, you may have begun to start a family. You may have adopted a child. Um, things like that need to be taken con uh, into consideration as well as your kids actually will fall under your risk management needs up until now, typically about 25 years of age, depending on the insurance company. You're going to have a greater tolerance for risk, so my advice to everyone is be willing to retain it, whether it's through deductibles or self-insurance. Um, invest your assets and try to mitigate losses before you consider purchasing insurance. The golden rule here is the less you have to insure, the less insurance you have to buy. I know it sounds sort of like a yogiism, but um, not having to buy a lot of things tends to go a long way in keeping your annual premium low. You're going to be less price sensitive. Cost always will remain a concern, but typically in this stage of life, you're more concerned with having a contract which will assure there's minimal interruption in your life. And that generally means having someone take the reins, run with the claim, and settle it to your, um, your requirements. So make sure that you do your due diligence still on your insurance company and consider utilizing a broker for that conversation. Um, again, you want to plan for losses. Invest in mitigation and loss control methods. Everything from alarm systems to um, cellular backup, backup generators, things like this help for your property. Making sure that you have a car with OnStar is another way of protecting yourself, not just from a property loss, but from physical damage or bodily injury as well. 
you're going to want to, again, use a broker for this type of planning and make sure that it's someone who interacts with your financial and legal advisors. Together, the three of these areas are how you actually develop a strategy. And it's a little bit more complex than just going it alone and trying to buy coverage and hope and pray that when there's a loss that it will respond the way that you're desiring it to. Um, and the claims that after everything has been um, strategized, your claims will actually be handled by your broker and your advisory team, your broker financial and legal advisors who provided you with recommendations and guidance on this will bear the risk for any error. So it's another way to help insulate you um, from an unforeseen or uncovered loss. Later in life, things get to be a little bit different. Um, you're probably going to have a larger or the largest asset base you've ever accumulated, but with a lower a earnings potential because obviously you're looking towards winding down your career. The issue here is making sure that you've set up your estate planning vehicles, um, taking care of any multi-generational or philanthropic risk planning needs that you have, whether it's transferring assets um, to your children, to other family members, to a philanthropic organization, family trust, um, and making sure that the policies in place to cover the liability for any entities you've created is properly managed. We don't want to have a situation where you put things into a trust for estate planning and then the trust is not covered and someone can find a way to litigate against that trust and take your hard-earned money. You're going to have a greater tolerance for risk. Um, you'll still take high deductibles. You may be investing assets in, mitigating, in mitigation tools. You may have already done that. Um, you're, now the flip side is going back to your younger years you're more price sensitive with lower earnings potential and looking at more of a fixed income making sure that you have the lowest price annually uh, becomes very attractive to you and it may in some instances be a situation where you want to take an even higher deductible than you considered when you were in the prime of your career um, simply to keep the cost smaller on the annual basis. You want to make sure at this stage that you have some sort of plan in place to track the success of your program um, typically in the mid-range of life everyone's pretty loose with everything but making sure that you've planned how you're going to gauge success with your advisors is a very important task. Utilize your broker and make sure they continue the conversation with your financial and legal advisors and make sure that they're still involved to handle claims um, particularly if you have assets that overlap with other entities or your other generations. So a few tips to consider. Um, a few red flags right off the bat. A few ways that you could be exposed to risk. Owning multiple homes is always a red flag. States are all very specific in their requirements. If you're in an area with a lot of catastrophic loss, if you have investment property or renovate, these are all areas that may not be covered by a basic quote-unquote insurance contract. Estate planning vehicles, obviously LLCs, LPs have their own um, inherent risks. Collectibles, whether it's vehicles, jewelry, wine, domestic help, traveling, and the most common one nowadays is heavy use of social media and a lot of followers. Libel slander claims are becoming the norm nowadays through people utilizing their significant Twitter, Facebook, other social media outlets, um, utilizing their followers and putting out a message that may not be uh, positive for an organization or an individual. A few tips to consider to help you protect your lifestyle before looking into insurance, always modify your risky behaviors and eliminate as many as you can. By doing this, you're going to have the least amount of coverage uh, purchase needs necessary and keep your annual price low. Make sure that you're taking the highest risk you can afford and set up count accounts with your financial planning planner um, to cover those deductibles or to fund losses wholly so you do not need to get an insurance product. Read your contract, understand how deductibles work, and the, if there's nothing else you take away from this, know that reducing coverage limits does not retain risk, it creates it. Um, you may void your contract by not being in compliance with requirements for minimum uh, replacement cost values or estimates for your home or your autos. Um, doing so can create a situation where your insurance company will deny a claim. There's a whole list here. I'm sure we can send the slides out for people to take a look at. But the real takeaway from this are these three points. Annually review this, your program with your broker, your accountant, your attorney, anyone you're using as a risk advisor, and early in life, use your friends, family, or trusted business associates as a sounding board for planning. Notify your insurer of any changes throughout the year and do not wait until renewal. You do not want to have a situation where they can deny or reduce coverage because they were not made aware of a change in risk. Consistently inquire about the cost of your products, but remember, do not base uh, your decision solely on price. You truly do get what you pay for. And always leverage your buying power as an individual and as a family by packaging lines through a single broker or agent and a single insurance company when able. That's going to make sure that your uh, annual expense is as low as possible. 
Here's my contact information should you have any other questions or want to continue the conversation 